Hi guys, my name is Bumpa and today I'm going to be talking about what I think a successful default on Terraside Inferno looks like and uh, what the goal of your default on Terraside Inferno should be. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of people showing strats or strats and what executions should be but I've never really seen, I haven't seen a lot of videos of people going over what your defaults should look like. And in my opinion, Terra side, or Inferno on the Terra side, every round, or pretty much every round should start with a default. Because nades on CT side Inferno are very, very useful, and they can shut down a site pretty easily, since every entrance point onto the sites on this map are very much choke points. So banana being the most obvious one can be shut down with literally just one smoke and a couple molotovs so to get started I'm gonna tell you or I'm gonna go over uh, how my team's default was ran and uh, who played where and whatnot so every round on a default started like this two players would be getting banana control I would either depending on the round if it was anti-eco for instance which is a whole nother beast but for instance just for the sake of argument I would be playing mexi pit or I would be playing alt mid holding a mid push like this or if I wanted to if I wanted to give my uh, apartments players some more uh, control or some more help getting control of apps I would play on this balcony and spam out uh, or hold the push or the window peak or spam out the wood that uh, goes into darkroom uh, meanwhile so two people banana I'm either playing Mexi, Alt Mid, or on the Balk, and then two people would be getting apps control. I, uh, I'm i not a very controlling IGL, I don't like to micromanage, I like to let my players play comfortably and how they want to, so I let them decide how they wanted to clear out spots and stuff, uh, but either they would do two through this, two, two through the normal T door, and or one through this door, and one on the hay cart. It didn't really matter to me, as we got results, so I let them choose how they want to play because I like my players to be comfortable and I run a very loose style of uh, IGL. So anyway, banana control and how to get it, this is basically what it looks like and since I'm assuming most players are going to be playing at a very low level of play that need this video because I'm assuming that most higher level people already know stuff like this and are probably probably know more than me on this uh, but anyway every round for banana control the two players would do pretty much the same thing one would flash over like this, one would get close under the arches and peek car, and then to clear out, a lot of counter terrorists like to play a setup where they play one player at the corner with an op, or a rifle or whatever, or maybe he'll be playing here. Anyway, one's playing the corner, and one will play sandbags, and this is actually a pretty decent crossfire, and you run into it a lot on uh, pistol round. So, what we would do, or how to counter that, anyway, is one player would molly out sandbag, and the other would play back right here, flash the corner. So this guy at the corner would be blind, and the guy sandbag is going to have to run out and try and get back into sight without getting killed by the guy who's peeking after that flash. Just to turn on uh, this to show you what it looks like. Just this flash right here. Flashes the corner. This guy's blind. Or he's running away. Whatever. Keeps him from peeking this angle anymore and uh, effectively allows your teammate to peek and kill whoever is possibly sandbagged. Okay, so now your two players have banana control. What are they going to do with it? So your two players are top banana. Now here's the part where they need to start baiting nades because banana especially is one of those sites that can be shut down with one smoke and when that smoke fades, if, they are, if they're good at rotating smokes, they can throw... I'll show you. They can throw this smoke from Arch that keep, pretty much keeps the B site on lock the whole time. So if the CTs are good at doing that, they'll pretty much never get, you might never get B, which is why default is so important. So to get nades out of counter terrorist hands at Banana, what I like to do is I like to get here and spam the wall and just let the counter terrorist know that I'm here and I'm possibly ready to take sight and I'm ready to take fights. So I would pre-fire a lot of stuff like this. I'd try not to maybe shoulder peek this angle, bait an op shot, 
because you got to remember that oppers might be posted on this corner and might be posted on spools so if i'm just baiting nades i would at most i would shoulder peek this i would never really i would never try and shoulder peek spools or anything like that but just letting counter terrorists know that you're here is usually enough to get a smoke out of their hand now if they're not biting on just shots maybe you flash over b once and get them blind and maybe you peek out a little bit and that'll prompt a smoke it all depends if they're not going for just shots throw a flash over and see if that gets a nade out of their or get a smoke out of their hand or maybe a molotov or something if they're playing really passively and not budging at all maybe you need to make the audible that hey these guys are holding onto their smokes they're being really greedy about them they're not going to use them early round so maybe you have five maybe you get initial banana control with the two players just to fake a default kinda and you walk up banana and you walk all five players up banana creep into sight like this clear this corner and once you get to about here you stop smoke CT and instantly just five people run out before anybody on the counter terrorist team has a chance to even get a flashbang or a molotov out of their hand to counter your rush you're already in sight you're in their face already they have nothing they can do about this so yeah this is more about defaults, so I'm not going to show you any B executes or anything like that, but that's how you get banana control, that's how you bait nades, and as a player playing this banana control position, you should be constantly feeding your IGL, or your, if you're the IGL, you should be constantly asking your players, hey, how many smokes have they used B, how many flashes have they thrown B, have they used any molotovs, you need numbers, because you want to know which site is going to be low on utility, so that you can go to whichever site has the least resistance and force these counter terrorists into an aim duel when you're executing with full nades. So you're throwing flashes over, you're throwing molotovs over, you're mollying out new box, you're mollying out first oranges, etc, etc. Meanwhile, these counter terrorists have no more counter flashes, no more counter mollies, no more counter smokes, and they have to rely on aim while you're relying on good nade placement and aim as well. Okay, so now that you know how to take banana control, let's talk about taking Hall's control. If my two players that are getting Hall's control need a little extra help, or perhaps the counter terrorists are like like to play aggro Hall's, what I do is let me just get up here real quick. This is where the balcony position comes in handy. You jump up here, and like you can get to this position before the counter terrorists can push in a dark room. So you can sometimes see the outline of a counter terrorist run past this window and get in there. So what I like to do is I like to just pre-fire this. I've caught people out with this too. Like, I've gotten a couple kills this way. But this serves two purposes. You're pre-firing the angle so maybe counter terrorists run into your bullets. And two, you're breaking the wood off this. Maybe you're spamming dark, etc. But once the wood's broken off this, you yourself can hop up onto hay cart and you have your two you have your two teammates at the in the entrance of this not quite peeking but they're there hold on i didn't do a good job they're not quite there but you molly out dark somebody's in there that's a free kill for your teammates that guy's going to wide peek out dark you got two people already posted on him that's a free and easy kill okay so your two players in halls they're going to be on the stairs one's probably going to hold boiler so while this guy's holding boiler, maybe there's a guy right here, he's going to peek the end of halls, and maybe when this guy peeks wide, this guy peeks close. So you're double peeking halls, so that at most so at most he gets one frag and you trade out the kill. Uh, like I said, I let my halls players do what they want, uh, get halls control how they want, but usually one guy would be putting pressure from the end of balcony, and one guy would be sitting in boiler, just holding mid, peeking, prodding, etc. Okay, so... What I like to do, I called this quite often actually, and it worked a couple times. I would be in alt mid, and my teammate, this is after my teammates have gotten halls control. I would have one guy at the end of halls, or say, maybe even two in boiler right now. I would either smoke off arch, or not smoke off arch, but I would, I would say I'm smoking off arch, I'm a flash up mid, I want you to kill this guy porch because we know there's a guy playing porch, he's playing pretty aggro, and we got guys in boiler ready to kill him. So maybe I would smoke off arch first, maybe not, because sometimes if you smoke off arch first, the guy of porch is just going to fall back because he doesn't have support from his teammate arch anymore, but if he's dumb, he'll stay. Anyway, I would throw that smoke or not, come over here, and flash my teammates up mid, like that. Perfect pop flash, guy porch is blind, your two teammates, or maybe just one, and you, 
you're going to be supporting. All three of you swing out wide, kill this guy in your porch, and if Arch is smoked off already, you don't even have to worry about that. But if our, if he's if it's not smoked off, the Arch player is going to be blind from this flash as well. So if you've got your two teammates boiler, you need to know that when you flash up, they're going to swing out wide trying to kill this boiler or this porch guy. You need to swing out wide and hold their Arch and make sure that they don't get killed from Arch in the back while they're trying to kill this porch guy for you. And if you do succeed in doing this, which it has worked for me quite a few times in matches and in scrims, you get an early round advantage that's one less smoke, one less fl or one less smoke, possibly two less flashes, and a, one less Molotov in the hands of counter terrorists to use when you finally do decide to execute. And it's just super effective at getting nades out of counter terrorists' hands, pushing counter terrorists back into their sights, and denying them info. Pushing counter terrorists back into their sights is super useful on this map because counter terrorists on this map like to play a lot of early positions, get a lot of information, so that they can predict a counter or a terrorist execute and rotate accordingly. But if you've got one, if you've got them pushed all the way back in a pit and maybe pushed all the way back in a moto after getting an early pick on their guy porch, they have no idea if you're walking up brackets or if you're going banana and you have banana control still. So just keeping the counter terrorists on their toes like that is very effective at it's very effective at getting nades out of their hands and just making it all the more e or all the more easy I don't know if I phrased that right but whatever easier for you to execute late round whenever you do decide and keep in mind your teammates should be feeding information on how many smokes and you should keep a mental note of how many smokes counter terrorists have used how many smokes they have left if they have molotovs if they have counter flashes etc etc and your guy at the end of boiler can even do some fucking prodding around right like this, spamming out boy or spamming out pit, and hopefully making the pit guy use a smoke early on the end of balk, or maybe a Molotov early on the end of the balk. Uh, but yeah, that is in my opinion how T side Inferno should be played. Almost every single round should be started off with a good default, and almost every single round you should be trying to get nades out of their hands. Uh, if you like the video please let me know and I will happily do more on different maps if you need it and uh, if you have any more questions on this video I'll be happy to answer all your questions in the comments section etc etc uh, my name is Bump and have a good day